Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to react to a ten of a kid that went to jail. Let's get started. Kids can be pretty awful, but these tykes take bad girl and bad boy to a whole other level. Check out our top 10 most horrible crimes committed by children. Aren't Canadians supposed to be nice? I guess Sandra and Beth Anderson of Mississauga, Ontario are the exception. In 2003, the sisters, who were 15 and 16 at the time, were charged for murder when they killed their mother by feeding her copious amounts of Tylenol and booze and then drowning her in a bathtub. The girls actually got away with it for about a year until their neighbor came forward with evidence that this wasn't an accidental death, but a previously planned and thoroughly thought out murder. If you listen to the 911 call that they made as a way to stage the incident as accidental, you'll hear the operator telling them to give CPR, but the girls aren't following through. By the time the ambulance arrived, she was dead. Apparently, the two girls were fed up with their mom, who worked two jobs and struggled with alcoholism, being unable to give them the expensive things they wanted. Police found out later that their internet search history showed research on how much money you would get if your mom died. They discovered they'd each get $68,000, which they could put toward their wishes like a European vacation, a marijuana farm, and a nice house. After they gave their mom the codeine-spiked beverage, they alerted their peers on social media about the process of the murder to which one of their twisted friends responded, good luck, wear gloves. Most of their friends agreed to keep it a secret, but Beth, the youngest of the two, kept bragging about how she killed her mom at parties and school events. This led to the police approaching one of her friends to wear a wire to record her confessing. The girl spent four years in jail before being let off early on parole. They have new names and completely new lives. There was even a movie called Perfect Sisters depicting their story. Let's hope that they're not getting any profits from the ticket sales. An 11-year-old boy from Britain, whose name can't be mentioned due to legal purposes, is serving a custodial sentence for his multiple counts of rape and sexual misconduct. The boy pleaded guilty for raping the same boy 15 times, as well as three charges of inappropriate sexual touching. Reports say that on May 29, 2016, the boy accused was playing with a 7-year-old boy in his bedroom when his stepmother heard whispering over the baby monitor. Suspicious as to what could possibly be going on, she investigated, only to find the 11-year-old raping her stepson. The defendant immediately said, I'm sorry, I don't know why I did it. The victim told the police that he had been raped every single time they played together and was told to keep it a secret. The defendant was put on bail, after which he touched a disabled 11-year-old boy over his trousers. When he was accused a second time, the boy again showed remorse and seemed sorry for what he had done. He said that he too was raped as a child and was still working through that. As of right now, he's the youngest sex offender in Britain. You kind of feel sorry for him, but he really needs to pay for his actions. Every teenager hates Mondays, but 16-year-old Brenda Spencer apparently hated them enough to end lives. At about 8.30 in the morning on a Monday in 1979, Brenda had the hunch to kill. The elementary school across from her house was just going into session with kids getting dropped off by their parents. She took a few shots from her sniper which her dad gifted her for her birthday, complete with 400 just wait for this. This is rounds of ammunition. She shot at a couple of kids, wounding them. It took a couple of seconds before the adults on campus knew what was happening. The school's principal, Burton Rag, ran outside, helping terrified children into the school. Him and the school's custodian, Mike Sakar, were unfortunately shot dead in the frenzy. Miss Spencer ended up killing two people and wounding nine others, and was charged with two counts of murder. Her attorney tried to get her off on a plea of insanity, but that didn't work, and she's now serving 25 to life. People claim that her parents' divorce was the cause of her misconduct. They said that something died in her after the split, especially since her and her siblings were sent to live with their distant, abusive father. She started to become interested in guns and metal bands like Alice Cooper. Brenda was given a parole hearing in 2005, but was unfortunately denied. She said in a TV interview that she was high on angel dust and pot when she committed the crime, but the toxicology reports say otherwise. She'll get another hearing in 2019 for potential parole. It's no surprise that she blames herself for the recent school shootings considering she orchestrated one of the first ones in recent history. It's a bit of an odd career choice. Four teenage Xbox players had their goals in sight as becoming professional hackers when they managed to hack into Microsoft, Epic Games, Valve, Zombie Studios, and the US Army. The four boys from various parts of the US and Canada managed to connect through their gaming networks online. 
The team allegedly used SQL injections as well as stolen passwords and usernames. The theft included software related to Microsoft's Xbox One gaming console and the Xbox Live gaming system. They also somehow swiped files containing data for unreleased games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and Gears of War. What's really crazy though is that they also hacked into the US Army's databases and stole their helicopter pilot training software. The total property stolen is estimated to be between 100 and 200 million dollars. The four boys were caught at the border when David Pecora, the Canadian of the bunch, and his dad were taking a trip to the States. He was taken into custody by the border guards and was told that it'll be a long time before he gets to return to Canada. The four boys will face up to five years in prison. Eric Miller, a chubby, nerdish kid from New York State, was only 13 when he killed four-year-old Derek Robbie out in the woods. On August 2, 1993, the young defendant was out on his bike when he came across Derek, walking by himself to a nearby summer camp. Eric managed to lure him into the woods, where he tortured and killed him. He dropped two large rocks on the four-year-old's head and then strangled him to death. He then stuck a stick up the child's rear opening in an attempt to bash his heart so it'll stop beating. He then took out a red Kool-Aid drink from Derek's bag and poured it onto his wounds. Eric came home that day totally calm, as if nothing had happened. The police eventually found out, though, and on August 16th of the following year, Eric was charged with second-degree murder and sentenced to the maximum term for juveniles at the time, which was nine years to life. Eric has been given a parole hearing every two years, but hasn't been let out since. When asked by the judge why he did it, he said because instead of me being hurt, I was hurting someone else. Amarjeet Sada of India killed probably more people than the average serial killer, and he's only eight. This is hard to believe, but this killer's second victim was his own sister, and his parents ended up covering it up in order to protect their son's freedoms. His third victim was a six-month-old baby. Who Wait, how old is this kid? Someone else. Amarjeet Sada of India killed probably more people than the average serial killer, and he's only eight. This is hard to believe, but this killer's second victim was his own sister, and his parents ended up covering it up in order to protect their son's freedoms. His third victim was a six-month-old baby, whom he took from a neighboring house to protect their son's freedoms. His third victim was a six-month-old baby, whom he took from a neighboring house and then bashed with a brick until the baby stopped breathing. Police eventually connected the boy's recent killing with the killing of his own sister. When he was asked why he did these gruesome things, he simply smiled and asked for a cookie. His parents said that he doesn't understand right from wrong. A psychologist discovered that Amarjeet had a chemical imbalance in his brain that caused him to express conduct disorder, which is a mental disorder where the sufferer doesn't understand morals. The data is foggy, but he allegedly spent about three years in either a prison or a mental institution. He's now reportedly a free agent, walking around with a new name and identity. One British teen did the unthinkable. At only 15 years old, Daniel Bartlam killed his own mother in a gruesome horror movie-like display. The whole thing was spurred on by a fight they were having at home. She called him a freak, and then something came over Daniel, and he began to hit his mother with a hammer, bashing in her skull. He then wrapped her in paper, covered her in gasoline, and set her on fire. He initially claimed that an intruder came in and killed his mother, but the police found a written-out soap opera plot on his computer that describes a killer bashing someone in with a hammer and then leaving them on the train tracks to die. It was also discovered that Daniel watched the film Saw just hours before killing his mother. At the hearing, Daniel claimed that there were voices in his head that were telling him to kill, and that he was having visions of doing these things against his will. Mary Bell was born in 1957 into a poor Liverpool family. She wasn't exactly raised properly. Her mother was a prostitute who was an alcoholic and rarely ever home. Reports say that her mother would often force Mary into prostitution even though she was just a young girl. She also tried to kill her daughter multiple times. Mary was a rambunctious, troubled little kid. She oftentimes would do things like burn kids in her class with cigarettes or hold them down and fill their mouths with sand. Mary's first official killing was when she strangled four-year-old Martin Brown in an abandoned house. That same summer, Brian Howe was found in a garbage dump with an M carved on his chest, which seemingly stands for Mary. This wasn't enough to spur on a full-on investigation, though, and it wasn't until Mary and her partner in crime Norma left confession notes at a nearby nursery that they were brought in for questioning. When the detective saw Mary's gleeful reaction to Brian being taken out of his family's home in a casket, he knew that she was to be locked up indefinitely. Mary served 12 years in jail and was released at 23. She's now living in England under a fake name.
One of the youngest killers in history, a four-year-old boy from Saudi Arabia allegedly gunned down his father with his dad's own pistol when he found out his parents weren't buying him a PlayStation. The dad was apparently undressing and put the weapon down for a brief moment when the kid picked it up and started firing. Saudi Arabia has dubbed this kid the country's youngest killer. This might be a warning for parents to hold off buying your kids' video games, because it could potentially lead to them reenacting that behavior, especially when that game contains violence. A 15-year-old from Utah allegedly killed his two younger brothers with a knife. The boy had a history of acting out. He ran away from home for about a year. Despite his troubled disposition, neighbors of the family claimed that his parents were very loving and attentive. The family had adopted two children into the family, and these were the two brothers who were eventually killed. The bodies of the victims were found on the floor of the family home when the mom and dad were returning from a dance recital. The teen was found miles away from the house where he was eventually arrested and taken into custody by the police. What's odd about the case is that the perpetrator wasn't raised in a poor family or abusive house Hold. Something inside him just snapped. So there you go, our top 10 child criminals. I can't believe some of these people are out in this world, walking around out there. Spooky. Well, if you can't read that, it says comment, means to subscribe, and like, alright, that's it for today. Bye, guys.